Buddy Holly's plane went down on February 3rd, 1959 in, in that Iowa cornfield. The music, we believe at the time, had died. And of course, that's all immortalized in Don McLean's famous song, American Pie. Uh, I was 12 years old at the time. I rem remember going to a school dance, a great school dance at the time. It was like walking to a room of zombies. I mean, every, you know, Buddy Holly's music was, was everywhere. The thing about Holly, though, is, is that he was so good and so uh, talented that his uh, legacy has gone uh, into the 21st century. Virtually everything we see in music and on video today uh, can be traced back to two icons. One, of course, Elvis and the other Buddy Holly. Elvis uh, was the quintessential star, uh, but Elvis uh, didn't write his own music, uh, didn't play an instrument, uh, didn't produce, and all the things that Buddy Holly went on to do. And then Elvis went on to make just bad, bad movies and went to Las Vegas and ended up dying there. Buddy Holly, however, was a multi-dimensional talent. He wrote songs, he played lead guitar, uh, he did all the things that uh, groups today do and groups of the 60s were renowned for doing. Holly pioneered a number of musical techniques. Uh, he was the first, uh, as I understand it, who put strings to rock music and to the rock beat. Just you know why Why you and I Will by and by No The thing about Holly was that uh, his music was so complex that many times uh, the great songs that he recorded uh, didn't even make it into the top 40 in this country, but were massive hits in Great Britain. And one thing Holly did that uh, Elvis Presley didn't do is Holly actually went to Great Britain, toured Great Britain, was on television, and before he even got there his songs were really doing well and he was sort of a superhero there. And people like John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Mick Jagger and others uh, who worshipped Holly uh, watched him on television. Holly was really different. Uh, when the British teenagers saw him, what they saw was not a solo performer like Elvis or a lot of the American stars or, or the British stars at the time. Holly came fronting a group that had uh, guitar, bass, and drums. And that became the standard uh, format for groups of the 60s and many groups today. And um, you know, groups like the Beatles, the Rolling Stones copied Buddy Holly and how his uh, particular group was configured. Thus, you can really credit Buddy Holly with the British invasion. Every group that came over, you look at Herman's, uh, Herman's Hermits, which was, a huge group, which was a huge group of the 60s. Um, if you look at just how they look, they all had the black rim glasses on. A lot of groups in those days did. Uh, you even have Elvis Costello today, who looks like Buddy Holly. So Buddy Holly had amazing influence, and is still with us today. Who Holly really influenced was John Lennon, and Paul McCartney, and uh, the group that became the Beatles. Uh, to such an extent, when the, the Beatles uh, recorded their first song, which they paid for at their own expense, it was Buddy Holly's That'll Be The Day. I would say that if you've not listened to Buddy Holly, uh, and really study Buddy Holly, you're musically illiterate, no matter what your, your background is, whether it's rock music, classical music, jazz, or whatever, because he's had a profound influence. And the amazing thing about Buddy Holly is he essentially died thinking he was a failure. His songs weren't doing well in this country. So Buddy Holly died without realizing that he had written tunes with, which would transcend his time, and which really gave us some beautiful music, which today we can still listen to and still has a great impact on our culture. Closer, going faster than a roller coaster. Love like yours will surely come my way. Hey, hey, hey. Love like yours will surely come my way.